Welcome. In this video I'm going to talk about setting up a Raspberry Pi as like a streaming video device and you can plug it into a monitor and I'm going to set this up so you can unplug the power and plug it back in at will and it will keep streaming the device. So this could be used for like a security camera system. Say you um, put your dogs out in the backyard and you want to kind of keep an eye on them. You could have an outdoor security camera and then you could have this monitor just always on. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to some Raspberry Pi hardware and if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link to my Raspberry Pi playlist if you want to see some of my other Raspberry Pi videos. So before I talk about making it, I'm going to demonstrate it. So I have a HDMI cable plugged into this monitor and I'm going to plug in power. So the Raspberry Pi is powering up. I'll turn the monitor on. So probably the most reliable way to do this would be to use Ethernet, but I am using Wi-Fi on this right now. So we have our little login down here, and in just a few seconds we'll see the video sh come up. So this is my Amcrest camera, and it's from the it's showing my driveway. What I can do now is I can unplug this, and I'll plug it back in, and it will boot and show that camera again. And the reason that works is because I've set up a read-only system on here. Um, so we're not corrupting the SD card when we unplug it uh, while it's hot, because typically you'd want to shut down the computer. This is also set up as a service, so if the video stream dies, it tries to reconnect to it. And then it also has Watchdog set up on it, so if it uh, the system gets frozen, it just reboots the whole computer. So here we have the video backup. So now I'll go to my computer and we'll dig on how to make this work. Okay, so I'm on my Mac here. I have my terminal up, and this is SSH into a Raspberry Pi. You can see that Pi screen here on the left. I'm not actually recording it with the capture software. You can just see it here. We don't need to see a lot of detail there. I'll put a link in the description of my Raspberry Pi setup that I'm using right now. I'm pretty much using it um, as it's written in that tutorial. So I'll be using these notes here, and I'll put a link in the description to my website where you can find this uh, typed out so you don't have to copy it from my screen. So the first thing we need to do here is install OMX player. So I'll type sudo space app space update. Now I'll type sudo space app space install space OMX player. I'll say yes, I want to install this. Okay, OMX player is installed. So now I'll test out my video stream. So this is one of my cameras. I have, it's an Amcrest camera. Let me widen this. So we have OMX player, and then I have this win, and I'm just showing it on a portion of the screen. And then I have the stream URL. So I'll run this here. And if we go look at the screen, you can see the videos displaying down here. So when I'm testing this, I like to just have it be on a portion of the screen. And then when I'm doing the final version, I'll make it full screen. The reason is, is if I'm configuring this on the Raspberry Pi and I make this full screen, then I can't access the terminal to do things on there. So I'll close this. And now I'll add this to a file. I'll say nano space video dot sh. I'll hit enter. And now I have a standard shell script here. I have the, it's opening up bash, and then it's going to display the video. I'll save this. I'll type control O to save, control X to exit. And then I'll type ch mod space plus X space video dot sh. So this will make it executable. So now I can type period slash video, and it will bring the video up. So this video is different from the video I was using before. This video is actually 1080p video. So on my security cameras, it has like the high bitrate feed and the low bitrate feed. So this is 1080p. If I change this here, the subtype to one, then it uses the low bandwidth feed, which is like 640 uh, by 480, I think something like that. So it's a lot smaller. So that may be all you need. And 
if you want to conserve some bandwidth, it might be make more sense to go with that. And then I have some like 4K cameras and things like that. On those, I have to use the lower bitrate feed because that's all the Raspberry Pi supports. So I'll close this, Control C. I'll clear my screen again. I'm gonna make my font a little bigger as we get into some more stuff. So now I need to create a service. So I want to type cd space forward slash etc forward slash system d forward slash system. Type ls here. We have a bunch of services here. So now I want to type sudo space nano space video dot service. And you can name this whatever you want. I'll hit enter. Now I'm going to paste this text in. Looks like I missed the first bracket here. I'll go add that in manually. Okay, so what we're saying here, it says description video service after is network.target. So this is going to run after the network is loaded. The type is simple. The user in the group is just pi. The environment path is, well, has a couple different paths here. That's standard like uh, bash path. Uh, exec start is home pi video sh. That's the shell script we just created. And we have restart always and restart seconds is three. And then install wanted by equals multi-user target. So this is gonna mean it's gonna run at what, what used to be called run levels. So I'll type control O to save this, control X to exit. I'll hit CD to go back to my home directory. I'll just clear the screen actually. Now I can type sudo space system ctl space enable space video. I'll hit enter and now I can type sudo space system ctl start video. So now if we look at the screen it should pop up here any minute. There we go. So if you were actually typing on this console right here you would not be able to use the console if this was full screen. You'd be able to use it, but you wouldn't be able to see it. So what you can do on the console is you can type sudo space kill all space omx player. So even though you can't see what you're typing, if you can manage to type this incorrectly and hit enter, it will drop your image. So, and that's the reason I have it displaying in the right hand corner so you can see what you're typing here. Now you'll see it's starting back up, and that's because we told it to restart. So I'm going to restart the whole server, and we'll see this will also do that. Type sudo reboot. Okay, so you see the video is now showing. So I'll log back into that. And now I will edit the video file, nano video. And I'll take out this dash dash win. Once I do this, it will display at full screen. Control O to save, Control X to exit. I can type sudo system ctl space restart video. It will go away, and when it comes back, it will be full screen. And there we go. So I'll clear my screen here on my terminal. So now what to do is set this uh, Raspberry Pi up as read only. So I'm going to use the Adafruit script to do that. So I have a website here. I'll put the link below down for this. And there's a couple different things here. So in this before you begin section, it says it only works on Raspbian and Light, and that's what I'm using here. It says it messes up cron jobs, and it should be the very last step, and back up the SD card first. No, really, back up your stuff. So I could recreate this if I screw it up, so I'm not backing it up, but Needless to say, you should back up if you don't want to lose anything on your card. So I will copy this wget here onto the terminal. It downloaded a script. Next, I'll run that script. It says it's a one-way operation. I want to continue, yes. It says enable the boot time read write jumper. I'm going to say no, and you can look up these things on that page if you want to know more about them. It says install the GPIO halt utility. I'll say no. It says enable kernel panic watchdog, and I do want to enable that, so I'll click yes. And I'm on a Raspberry Pi 3, so I'll choose one. I'll say continue. And now it's going to run the script to make my card read only.
Okay, it's asking if I want to reboot now. I'll say yes. You can see on the left here the system is booting. And now the video has loaded. So I can still SSH into this. But there's not a lot I can do. Like I can't change the service because it's a read-only system. So you want to lock it down. You could even take SSH off of this uh, before you make it read-only and that way it has nothing open for anyone to hack into. So I'm going to now pull the power on this and you'll see the screen go blank on the left. Okay, has no signal and I'm going to plug it back in and in a minute here it will load. So that's the old image loading. It just took a second to update. So you could set this up where you have a Raspberry Pi plugged into a TV using HDMI. And with the, some of these newer Raspberry Pis, you can set up power over Ethernet. So you wouldn't even have to plug it into a wall. You could plug uh, an IP camera in somewhere to PoE. You could plug the Raspberry in to PoE. And you could stream that camera to the Raspberry Pi and display it on the TV. And then that TV could be on a timer system so it turns on and off automatically. It's like, say, it turns on in the morning, turns off in the evening or anything like that. So that's all for this video. I'll put a link in the description to my other Raspberry Pi videos that might be of interest to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.